today we shall look at the another important form of corrosion called as uh, crevice corrosion it is also uh, called as uh, under deposit corrosion sometimes called as uh, water line corrosion if you want to call it a gasket corrosion all this uh, different names are given for this forms of corrosion so crevice corrosion is a, is a is a common name so it is called as also as under deposit sometimes called as gasket corrosion okay and uh, is what similar to that is called as uh, water line corrosion in all these cases there is something uh, very common there's a common mechanism uh this a uh, particular type of corrosion problem is industrially very important okay i show some examples of how the crevice corrosion can affect the performance of a component what you have seen here is uh, is a flange joint of an heat exchanger okay the heat exchanger is made up of uh, the carbon steel you can see this and uh, the carbon steel inside was cladded with a duplex stainless steel so it's a stainless steel and it's a flange joint and use a use a use a gasket here right use a gasket here and uh, the medium of uh, exposure in this case was uh, sea water now you see the corrosion right the exposure is inside here the attack is slightly uh, inside see this is inside it's not at the mouth of this joint huh? so these are the typical uh, we call gasket corrosion or crevice corrosion joint corrosion problem you have uh, the other kind of joint you'll see in the case of a heat exchanger we broadly brought out this heat exchanger uh, in one of the previous classes now you have the tube and tube sheet joint right tube and tube sheet joint and this location is the tube and tube sheet joint here just expanded see please look at this a mechanical joint huh? it's just expanded you have a you have a tube you have a tube okay surrounding that is a tube sheet you join them by expanding it this it bites actually and there is an airline gap now look at this, this is only the place where it is joined there is undergoing corrosion this is a stainless steel it is used in the uh, one of the high pressure heaters in a boiler uh, operations actually thermal power plants these are joints huh? what you see here this is something i call as uh, under deposit corrosion right i hope you will able to see this spots here okay these are the spars the fouling occurred what does it mean by fouling occurred some kind of uh, you know organic uh, film or products accumulated on the surface of this 
when they accumulated, look at this, below the deposit only is more corrosion. And the surrounding area there is no corrosion at all actually. Inside you can see that uh, you know inside this team, you know, this is this no, no corrosion here, ok. So, wherever there are deposits and below the deposits it can cause corrosion of uh, in this case uh, the stainless steel, ok. This is a, a common industrial problem, ok and it can cause uh, premature failure of the industrial component actually it can happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to introduce a new book and if you uh, people uh, you know can have a look at that. This book is um, An introduction to metallic corrosion by U R Evans. I think you know all the name is very familiar to you, right? The Evans diagrams. Hmm? And it is uh, published by Edward. Arnold 1981 Great Britain is it's actually it's a third edition. I uh, just introducing this book to you because um, you will see quite a bit of uh, industrial illustrations importance. Not much on thermodynamics and kinetics the way other books are dealing with, but it is a nice illustration exposures you will see. Um, there are some typical experiments in the laboratory to simulate the various forms of corrosion. So, when you people have time I think you can you can look at this book actually. I will give you some nice illustrations uh, as given in this book to show how this crevice uh, corrosion can occur. If you take a take a lead take a lead you immerse it in a in potassium chloride solution and you place a, a lenticular a lenticular glass like this. Keep a lenticular glass like this. Of course, in the glass you do not find liquid, ok. You allow the lead to corrode for some time and then you remove this the if you remove this glass and observe the corrosion of the lead, you will notice somewhat similar to this. ok. Here no corrosion, taking place and
surrounding this region corrosive attack. And here onwards, all you can cases you can see the passivity. There is a corrosive attack, and also you see, uh, you know, over this place, also see thick lead dioxide, huh? It is formed. This is the plain view, the plain view of the lead surface. You take a cross sectional view of this, same thing you take a cross sectional view of this. sectional view, right. And of course, here you see quite a bit of uh, lead dioxide, here it is not corroded, this is your uncorroded area. This uncorroded area and this area all passivated area. So, it is very interesting observation, right. Where the, the lenticular glass touches the lead quite uh, you know, I mean, um, it touches, uh, I mean, is the contact is so good, it replaces the liquid completely. So, there is no corrosion between the liquid and the metal, so it does not corrode. But slightly away from it, there is airline gap, and in the airline gap, I think corrosion takes place, ok. And this, this is the these are all the corroded areas. Area, you see that. So, there is a very, very fine gap, and there is a very fine gap that exists between the lenticular glass and the lead, or there there is a corrosion, and the gap is quite large, there is no corrosion. And if the glass touches and replaces the potassium chloride solution completely, of course, there is no corrosion. But in between, this is the place where the airline gap, the corrosion takes place. So, airline gap is, is a critical issue in corrosion of the lead here. This is one more illustration is very nice, ok. In another case, uh, you can take a steel take a steel and you have a drop of potassium chloride solution right you have a drop of potassium chloride solution with water and to this you add what is called as pyroxyl indicator. Add to this. 
And what is a uh, peroxide indicator? The peroxide indicator is prepared by mixing phenolphthalein with potassium ferricyanide. So, the solution consists of consists of what? It consists of uh, a dilute solution of potassium chloride and the ferroxyl indicator and it consists of phenolphthalein and potassium ferrocyanide. The very interesting thing happened in this case and if one watches closely, you will see that over a time period here, you will, you will notice the blue coloration and here this location, this location, you will see pink coloration. pink color okay so this is a pink color here pink and you have a pink color anybody with a with a chemistry background you will understand this when you have a phenolphthalein and you have a pink color what does it really means the time when do you get pink color uh, in a solution uh, containing phenolphthalein exist. Anyone? Yeah? Is it acidic? Is it alkaline? So, it is alkaline. So, when you have alkaline condition only you get phenolphthalein giving rise to pink color. So, the edges in the periphery of the on the droplet completely ok. If I if I take a if I take a, a plain view of that ok. If I see this as a plain view the droplet you will see the blue color and this is your pink color. Ok. The pink happens because you have hydroxides huh? and blue happens because you have Fe 2 plus ions. If you have Fe 2 plus ions they interact with the ferricyanide, potassium ferricyanide you get a blue color and you have a hydroxide then what happens? You will get a pink color. How is that possible? How it happens? It happens because this area becomes a cathode. What happened to this area? This area becomes the anode. You take a steel you put in sodium chloride or potassium chloride solution. The anode is where you have an oxidation. In this case, the steel will get converted into Fe2 plus and the electrons are released. The electrons are consumed by a cathodic reaction. If the water is uh, little, uh, you know, neutral or little alkaline, what is the cathodic reaction? The cathodic reaction is going to be what is the cathodic reaction here? It could be oxygen plus electron to H2O giving rise to 4 with minus. So, it becomes alkaline. Here, 
you have the metal getting dissolved here. So, what does it mean? Here the ion is going out as Fe2 plus, the electrons are released here, they go to this place and you have a cathodic reaction here. Okay. Here you are going to have cathodic reaction. On the center, you have anodic reaction. The reason is very simple. What is involved in the cathodic reaction? What is the species involved in the cathodic reaction? Yeah? Can you? What is the species involved in the cathodic reaction? Yeah? It is oxygen present here. So, the oxygen, so oxygen is a cathodic reaction in the peripheral or the periphery of the drop you know you have more access for oxygen there, the oxygen will enter from the air and go to the periphery and you start moving from the periphery to the center, the oxygen concentration decreases. So, most of the cathodic reaction is confined to the periphery and the anodic reaction automatically is centered around the drop. So, you find that in a droplet you have separate anode and separate cathode spatially. So, it is not a uniform corrosion anymore, it is a localized corrosion, it is essentially this is this is in fact called as differential aeration corrosion. The, the oxygen concentration at the center and at the periphery is different. So, this leads to the other form of the corrosion called as waterline corrosion. So, concentration cells so, the key issue here is the concentration cell. What is the cell formed? The cell formed because of the change in the oxygen partial pressure in the electrolyte. So, that is a key for the, uh, the localized corrosion. This can be very well demonstrated actually, ok. It can be very well demonstrated. Let us look at the a typical stainless steel which exhibits active passive transpassive behavior ok. Let us just take a anodic polarization curve like this. This is your uh, you know a schematic of anodic polarization curve showing active passive transpassive transition. The E car for this particular system would depend upon the cathodic reaction. Assume that the, the steel is exposed to water which is a neutral water. The major cathodic reaction will be what? the oxygen reduction reaction. I consider the water containing large amount of dissolved oxygen, the water containing other case less amount of oxygen there. So, I am going to draw the cathodic curves. case 1 and case 2. One case the oxygen content is more, other case oxygen content is less. Can you tell me which of the two has uh, lower oxygen content? Yes, case 2. How do you say that? Yeah, right, but how do you say that? What is the basis for that? Why does it pass away readily? Why should uh, it cross cyclical? Yeah. 
If the oxygen content is less, so what does really happen? What, what is related to actually? Yeah. You have oxygen in less, the amount of oxidation, amount of reduction may be less. Eh? But can it be a little bit more? Specifically, you have seen some relation before. Yeah, so the limiting current density is a factor that talks about, right? Isn't it? You all know that limiting current density is, is you know, is, you know, the concentration of the bulk of the species detects that, okay? So, when the concentration of oxygen is less, the limiting current density is less, and so you will get E car of corresponding to this, and you get E car corresponding to this depending upon the oxygen content, okay? Of course, we all know that when there is more oxygen content, it more passivation takes place, all these things, okay. So, on a metal surface, coming back to the point, on a single metal surface, uh, you know, in one place you have more oxygen content, in another place less oxygen content, the place having less oxygen content would not be tending to passive. The one place where having high oxygen content will tend to become passive actually because, because of what? Because the you need a certain, uh, you know, current density to cross the IC value which is I critical, you need to do that. So, this also was, was demonstrated by another nice simple experiment actually, you know. What was, what was done was, if you take a semi permeable membrane okay the permeates for oxygen there and take this ultralight suppose you, you suppose you take a uh, this is stainless steel take stainless steel and you close this but what do you do you bubble one side with the oxygen there other side you bubble with nitrogen, right? So, this is electrode 1, electrode 2, okay? Electrode 1 and electrode 2, take care, okay? And also, you can connect this with an ammeter you connect with the ammeter there, ok. So, what will happen now? You have oxygen here and so, what, what do you think will happen? Will that be a, a potential difference between E 1 and E 2, ok. So, what happens if there is a potential difference and you short that, what will happen? The current will flow. So, how does, how does the current will flow here? Tell me. Current will flow from E2 to E1 or E1 to E2? The current will flow from E2 to E1, right? And so, the E1 is going to act as a anode, this is going to act as a cathode current flows. Agreed as these things? So, what do you understand from here? If in a, in a metal, see the, the potential of the of the 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 E uh, equilibrium potential for for the for the oxygen system, okay. What is this, uh, this one e equal to 
e naught plus 0 0.059 upon um, 4 here right and the partial pressure of oxygen ok upon what the partial pressure of O H minus to the power 4. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think it must be log here. Log here, ok. So, when the oxygen partial pressure increases, the E increases 10 to us more noble. And so, it sets up what is called as concentration cell. that leads to corrosion of metals. Now, this is only one reason for crevice corrosion, only one reason for gasket corrosion, but you will see that that is not the only reason for that, ok. You will see the environment plays a very important role, we will we'll, we'll talk about soon, but the major initiative comes from the concentration cell because the concentration cells make one place anode, then other place as, as a cathode and uh, making as uh, you know localized anode and localized cathodes at macroscopic level. Please look at macroscope, why called macroscopy? It is a gasket, they are few millimeters apart, it is not microscopic like uh, the microstructures, you see the, we see the situations. These are, um, as I told you, important problems because uh, you know, you know there are you know you, we have a rivet joints for example, right? You you join the metal with the rivets and you know, flanges, sometimes hem joints, and these joints would have some gap. Okay, so the like you have rivets. have flanges you have in fact threaded bolts okay. or in deposits you know The idea is you must have an airline gap yeah. this gap is sufficient for the liquid. to penetrate. But insufficient for convection. Within this gap, there is only a diffusion process, ok. So, only diffusion. Of species. So, what does it mean? If the gap becomes more, suppose, uh, see th these gaps are all in the, in, in the range of few microns, maybe about let us say 4 to 10 micrometers is the uh, the crevice depth uh, crevice width I would say width of the crevice. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be a few millimeters what happens then the oxygen can migrate much easily through convection process though they do not form a cell at all due to concentration difference because 
it does not exist. So, one of the requirement for crevice corrosion is there should be a gap and that gap has to be very small and there should be no diffusion taking place in the system. Okay. So, that is the basic um, requirement for a crevice corrosion. See, what about geometry, what about fabrication that you do? See, there are cases where people weld it, you know welding, right? You, you talk about a TIG welding. In the TIG welding, if the fusion is not very good, if there are airline cracks, the airline cracks can become a crevice corrosion. It is not necessarily you have an external joints like that, ok. So, that kind of things you know can lead to crevice kind of attack in very many industrial components. Suppose, I have a oxide scale, I did not remove the oxide scale, I make it loose can lead to form of crevice corrosion taking place on the metal. But nevertheless, you need to understand one important thing. For crevice corrosion to occur, the metal has to be passive. Please understand this. Why? If the metal is not passive and you visualize the situation, the crevice corrosion may not occur. Why may not occur? No, oh, I have same gap, the gap is same, but it is not a passive metal like a carbon steel let us suppose I take and little more in acidic environment I take it and say there is no crevice corrosion. Crevice corrosion more often occurs in stainless steels you know where the passivation is predominant. Why does it occur when the metal is not passivating? Yeah, see when you when you when you when you when it does not passivate, increase in oxygen content will only increase the corrosion rate. A decrease in oxygen content will only decrease the corrosion rate, is not it? Is it correct or not? In, in a carbon steel, um, you know where it does not passivating. When you increase oxygen content, what will happen to corrosion rate? It won't decrease; it will only increase because the increase in oxygen content always rises the electrode potential. That is for sure, right? No matter what the metal it is, whether it's stainless steel or a steel, the E core will always go up. But in the case of stainless steel, when the E core go up, goes up, there's a chance that it passivates. But in a carbon steel, when the E car is going up, then what happens? The corrosion to only will increase, it is not going to decrease at all. So, the, the crevice corrosion is more applicable to the passive metal. Aluminum alloys, yes, true, it has happened. Magnesium alloys, crevice corrosion can occur, ok. So, crevice corrosion also is has to be metal has to be passive in order to form the curve, you know the crevice corrosion. So, we have looked at the broad contours of crevice corrosion. Let us look at the mechanism of crevice corrosion. Okay. You can uh, broadly say that the crevice corrosion involves one is the initiation The two is growth, initiation of the crevice and growth of the crevice. And the initiation of crevice is not so well understood mm -hmm. as the growth of the crevice corrosion. Now, let me try to um, 
explain to you with some schematic what are the things involved in the crevice corrosion of uh, stainless steels uh, initiation process. Let's let's look at some thought experiments wherein I take a metal, I take a metal which is a stainless steel, it forms a passive film. Please notice this passive film is thin, is not it? We, we have been talking about passive film thickness in the order of hang stamps, about 40 hang stamps to 100 hang stamps like that. They form a passive film and it is exposed to the to the environment and, and then you have exposed to the air. So, when a stainless steel is exposed to the air and environment, what do you expect? You will expect that to be passivated, right? It is supposed to be passivating. So, it is passivating now. If one measures the potential, I would say the three locations, you measure the potential of this. E, you measure the potential of this, it will be in passive range or active range, what do you normally expect? The stainless steel is nicely aerated condition of environment, will be spontaneously passivating. So, the potential will be generally in the passive range, maybe something like Something I am just giving some approximate number, there is nothing you know unique about these numbers. Hmm. If I measure the pH of this, it will be neutral or slightly alkaline, maybe let us say about 7.5, 7.5, 7 7.5, right. So, that is the pH of the solution at location 1, location 2 and location 3, you get these things. Now, what we do over this, you keep a nice flat glass plate, ok. Let us look at what happens now, ok. Let us now take a, a This is the stainless steel, ok. And I will just place a small glass, glass plate over this. Okay. air, it is the water. So, I measure the E value and the pH value at time t equal to 0, right. At time t equal to 0, I measure these values just after placing. So, what would happen? It will almost show the same values, right. It will show right. Now, the corrosion reaction will occur. See, when the metal is passivating, it does not mean there is no corrosion. Only thing the rate of corrosion is less, the anodic reaction rate is less. So, there is a corrosion. 
So, what will happen now? When there is a corrosion, metal get oxidized, the reducing species gets reduced, right? Like in this case, you may add oxygen present, they get reduced. The oxygen consumption over here continues. But what happens to the replenishing of this? It does not get replenished. Because of crevice, the oxygen content with the time decreases over here. Whereas, the oxygen content over location here and location here remains in the steady state, it does not change at all, whereas the oxygen content here decreases. So, what will happen to the potential here? The potential will drop with the time. So, at time t equal to some, some x, some x value, ok. Now, what happens now here? Here, this may become still 0.3 volts, and this may become, let us say, 0. Point, say minus 0 0.3 volts, and this is the pH may still remain the same, it may remain the same. So, what happens now in this case? Now, the potential over here drops, it goes relatively to a more negative potential and this is uh, remain the same. So, this now tend to become an anode and this becomes now what? The cathode now. Earlier, they are almost the same. So, what happens now with the next thing that can happen is, ok is T equal to y and e would this n will remain the same here may become a little bit a little bit more negative now what happens now over here the iron gets suppose i i blow this area I magnify this, I magnify this, what happens? Iron will go as plus two electrons, right? And this electron from here go to this over here, all right? And here the oxygen will will tend to become OH minus here the oxygen will tend to become minus. So, it establishes a cathode here, the cathode here and the anode here ok. Now, what can happen? The one more thing can happen here, what is that? Fe 2 plus can combine with water can form ferrous hydroxide and 2 plus right. This is possible to happen case. Yes. So, this place tend to become more acidic and tend to become more positive. So, what happens now? It becomes acidic and also electrically what? Electrically
positive. Am I right? You have more positive charges on this on this on this location. As opposed to that, the outside is relatively more negative charges. Right? So, what will happen to pH now? The pH it might remain almost the same outside, it remains almost the same, or it can become maybe it can become maybe 9, something like that, because the pH is uh, increasing because of a cathodic reaction. Here, the pH may go less about, the, the pH can be about 4, can be pH can be about 4 that becomes relatively acidic. Please notice what is happening that it is electrically positive. So, in order to neutralize this location what will happen? The negative ions from the surrounding areas like chloride will migrate to the to the chloride bulk chloride it goes to the Kruis chloride. Okay. It goes to the, the Kruis chloride. So, what happens now? Then H plus C L minus can form hydrochloric acid. Agreed? Understood? So, the initiation part if I summarize the initiation. So, if I summarize initiation, initiation leads to local anode and local cathode. It leads to drop in pH on the anode and say small rise in pH on the cathode. Okay. If chlorides are present, if chlorides are present, They migrate to the anode, which is a device. Okay. Then what happens? Then it is going to be formation of acid leads to film breakdown etc. So, there is an active dissolution of metals. So, let us now um, Take. So, we have seen that the initiation process is, is driven by the oxygen partial pressures and then is accelerated by the presence of aggressive ions such as the chlorides. How does the growth occur? Okay. How does the growth occur? Let us look at the situation where
the steel glass plate and uh, the passive film and here what happens the metal ions m the electrons travel here and what happens the chlorides migrate to this place chlorides and this place you have H plus over here right now look at the situation that this place is now called as occluded cell is confined is fully diffusion controlled so no convection taking place okay now it becomes an autocatalytic process Please notice that the anode, sorry, the, the anode over here and the cathode, they remind with the time. We said in the uniform corrosion, the anode and cathode will, will alternate. At the time this will remain as anode, this becomes a, it becomes a cathode. And they establish a distinct potential, anodic potential and cathodic potentials. It, you would expect this cathode to polarize this anode so that this becomes passivation, right? Isn't it? Okay, can you see that? We saw the galvanic corrosion before, right? If you have two different metals with the different potentials, what happens? The galvanically is shorted, the anode will tend towards the cathode and the cathode will tend towards the anode. So, you it, it can drive, it can move. In a crevice, that does not happen because the resistance between the cathode and the anode would remain, it does not allow the anode to ever become a cathode. So, in the crevice, there is a resistance. For ionic, I am talking about ionic resistance. See, the electronic conductivity is very good in the metal, no problem. But there is an ionic resistance taking place. And so, the anode, uh, the anode and the cathode would remain on the time. Okay. So, one of the conditions of the crevice corrosion is that it occurs more in the highly resistive corrosive environment. When resistance is more in the electrolyte, what happens? The anode and cathode are well separated. They do not become a single entity at all. So, that is a property of the environment that will promote the crevice corrosion as we see later. So, the, the growth of a crevice, people have been modeling quite a bit on that actually. Okay. You know, and uh, because this is a very important problem for the naval applications. In fact, even the aircraft applications where 
the aluminum alloys will undergo crevice corrosion at the joints and all these stuffs, ok. okay. So, uh, a lot of work has gone into understanding of crevice corrosion and modeling the uh, crevice corrosion kinetics of metals, ok. So, this you know completes our discussion related to the mechanism of crevice corrosion. Uh, any of you have any questions? We can we can discuss. Okay, if it's not there, I will complete uh, another uh, similar um, interesting thing about the water line corrosion. Okay. Yeah, some inhibitor may cause, but overall the inhibitors uh, lower the corrosion rate of the metals, right. Does the increase in the conductivity of the electrolyte cause an increase in the uniform corrosion? Uniform corrosion will always be less. When you increase the resistivity of the environment, yeah. Yeah, when the conductivity is increased, uh, the uniform corrosion will will increase. Hmm. But when the conductivity of the electrolyte is 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 lowered, it promotes more of uniform corrosion, uh, more of um, yeah, more of the localized corrosion than the uniform corrosion of metals. Does inhibitor change the conductivity of the electrolyte? Yeah, of course, there are. You see, in the inhibitors does not reduce or alter the conductivity of the electrolytes generally, okay, generally you can say. But it can, uh, you know, there are different mechanisms you saw before, right. You saw that it can form a film on the surface. So, it, it covers. If there is an anodic inhibitor, you can very well go and absorb onto the anodic site and you can bring down the corrosion rate of the systems. So, inhibitors overall will bring down the uh, in fact all forms of corrosion actually. In fact, uh, you you will see you know uh, even you can bring down even pitting corrosion and crevice corrosion and erosion corrosion basically, uh, but then it may not be so effective right. It may bring down the uniform corrosion much much effectively as compared to crevice corrosion, but yeah it could reduce the crevice corrosion to a certain degree can do that. In carbon steels, is it possible that crevice corrosion starts occurring because of the presence of airline gaps? No, so you are you are talking about the, the uh, crevice corrosion with respect to carbon steel, ok. See, the, the carbon steel as it you know as I could say that if the oxygen content is is quite quite large, ok. And you you will always see that the corrosion rate is increasing only, ok. And, um, and in fact, that is the reason why wherever the carbon steel is involved, you always lower the oxygen content if they are possible, whether it is uh, in, in a boiler, boiler water treatment or any cases, ok. So, the, the crevice corrosion, in fact, the crevice corrosion of carbon steels never exist. It, if it can exist, uh, probably it can happen in a case where you are tending to make this the carbon steel passive by increasing the pH. If you look at the Purbe diagram, the stainless steel, I mean the, the carbon steel also can passivate in the range of about 12.5 and all like that ok. There is possible, but in fact uh, the problem with the carbon steel is that if you add the oxygen a little bit more, it start a pitting actually you know, it does not get into get into that you know, because the breakdown of these uh, oxide films on an iron is so easy. Okay, so if you slightly increase the potential beyond certain values, you can break down and lead to pitting. So carbon steels, they do not undergo any crevice corrosion. 
that is why whenever you have chlorides uh, we simply do not have any problems whereas when you have some fasteners or such, such kind of things used for marine uh, environmental conditions stainless steel stainless steels of most of the varieties they face uh, the what is called as uh, the crevice corrosion problem primarily because the passive weight and the chlorides can destroy the passive film you know quite effectively now as you noticed in the, in the in the, uh, the mechanism of initiation and growth now the growth of the crevice would much depend upon the environment assume that there is no chloride present in the environment okay so the growth of the crevice is, is almost negligible okay so you may have a concentration cell set up and make the one place anode where the oxygen content is low other place where the oxygen content is higher you may have have a cathode okay it does happen but the growth of the crevice is is, is much slow so that means the time taken for the failure of the component would depend upon the chloride concentrations like if the the chloride concentration of certain environments so let's take let's say water some water may have 100 ppm of chloride and some cases you can have 1000 ppm of chlorides okay you will see later that 316 may not undergo crevice corrosion in water containing 1000 ppm of chlorides whereas the 304 stainless steel might undergo crevice corrosion in in water containing 1000 ppm of chlorides but in 100 ppm yeah none of them both of them they do not undergo uh, crevice corrosion even though there may be uh, oxygen cells are formed at all right but to sustain this okay you also have to have a aggressive environment okay is is important for that okay so um yes the is primarily driven by the oxygen partial pressures a difference in between two locations but is even more important to see the how i you know the what kind of environment that you deal with that decides what the life is and that decides also the selection of materials for a given applications you know as you start increasing chloride more and more you are going to choose uh, better and better materials to resist the crevice corrosion so oxygen is one one part of it but aggressiveness of the environment is uh, is equally important yeah so then we'll uh, stop the discussion for today and we'll talk about the the so called uh, you know water line corrosion okay see what does this the water line corrosion really means actually okay so we we'll, we we'll discuss in the in the next class okay so thank you and